Hello, everyone. And Byron, um, Lindy Wisisudu, who is the current Minister of Tourism, she's gunning to become the ANC president later this year, ostensibly under the radical economic transformation faction of the ANC. And in light of this president's presidential ambition, if you wish, Lindy Wisisudu is putting out quite a bit of written content for our media to publish. And I thought to myself, well, Byron hasn't read the latest piece by Lindy Wisisudu. So I thought, I will just read a few excerpts and you can comment on them. Uh, this one is called, We Need to Have a Difficult Conversation About the Africanization of the Law. Mm. So it's really, you can see a theme happening here. Mm. So for clarity for everybody, this is uh, relevant to Ramon and I because we're both lawyers. He's a lawyer, I'm a lawyer. So this is our area of expertise. So. Okay, hit me with it. Uh, I'm prepared to have my day get ruined. All right, so she does ask a question. Is it any surprise that the bulk of wealth in this country is housed in assets and rent seeking? So the owners of assets have the power to generate more assets and more rent seeking. Mm, I wouldn't call it rent seeking. I mean, that's the essence of building a business, right? You generate assets, those assets derive revenue and profits, and then you invest those profits and revenue into more assets. That's like, she's basically describing a business, but for her, it's not a good thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's the communist way, right? I mean, she's a communist. So she's basically like, oh, you uh, exploited the hard work of the labor market and therefore made a profit and didn't share it amongst everybody else. And so, you know, that makes you a thief. Box down and communist yeah. stuff. Okay. Exactly. So for her, the big corporations are the biggest thieves. No, I don't mm. actually disagree with that i think a lot of corporations are thieves uh, but really the institutions she continues to say the institutions stealing the billions will tell you that all of our problems are caused by government corruption corruption is a problem but there is ways to deal with it but the most important question she says is if there are corrupt people in the government who are the corruptors of those people in government mm. so let's hear it this who did she say is the corruptors well, she says, according to the state capture report, like Bain, KPMG, the McKinsey's of the world, the trillions of the world, you know, the Steinoffs of the world, because of their pigmentation, pigmentation rather, they so survive. So basically, private, private enterprise. She's basically arguing that's right. that, that that government has been corrupted by private enterprise. So basically, exactly. all private business is making a killing. It's exploiting the wealth of people, and then it's corrupted government. So that's what she said so far. Okay, so proper communist uh, bullshit. Cool. Very well, very well. And then she argues that there is actually no black middle class in this country. The black middle class are debt slaves to financial institutions and their shareholders. Um, so I suppose anyone who's black in the middle class with a mortgage is not someone who's aspirational or wants to buy a house on credit like most of the world buy their houses according to the way they are debt slaves yeah but that, that goes for all white people too last time i checked i bought my house on bond you bought your house on bond like we don't just go out and go hey look we were born with a silver spoon and we got millions in the bank like most of us buy a house on bond in fact most businesses are bought on a loan so you usually start up a business with a business loan which you have to pay back so you're a slave to the debt of your business and you're a slave to the debt of your car because your car gets bought on finance. So what she's describing there is pretty much the entire world. This isn't relevant to pigmentation of your skin. It's not a black problem. It's not a white problem. It's a, it's a, if you want wealth, you need to pay for it problem. Like that's just the way it works. Okay. Yeah, but for her, for her, that can happen, but not to black people. Because apparently for black people, it's akin to slavery for the most part. Because she says real absolute middle or upper class is ownership of assets. Is that so not what happens when you pay it off? Because for, forgive me if I'm wrong, but if a black person buys their house and pays off the bond, do they not own the house? Is there a law that stops them owning the house? I, I'm not aware of that law. Like if the guy pays for his car, does the car not become his? Because she's saying, oh, it's not ownership. Like, then what is it? Like, do you pay off a loan and then some white guy, Jan, comes back and he's like, hey, it's my house now. Like, is that what happens? Like, pretty sure that doesn't happen in South Africa, man. Like, that sounds bullshit. But anyway, 
What else did she say? Yeah. So the basic thing is all this debt and all these financial institutions and all these corporations, for Lindy Mississippi at least, is distinctly un African. We live in an African country, but we don't have African laws, you see, because African laws, according to the piece, does not seem to have any sort of debt or financial institutions or things like that. Okay, I've got, Somehow, I've got to stop you there for one sec. Okay, so right, far, right. she's talked about a load of communist bullshit. She's basically said the problem with this country is the state isn't powerful enough. In other words, the state doesn't control every aspect of life, which means that private enterprise are exploiting the labor market because that's the communist idea, right? It's like workers of the world unite. Like, oh, let's take back the means of production. Okay. And then she's going, but those private parties are corrupting government. And then that means that government isn't doing what it's supposed to do. And, you know, you might say, well, the benefit of, of having this like capitalist environment is having a black middle class and so her argument is but there is no black middle class because they have to pay like bonds and loans and stuff and they didn't just get shit for free and then she's basically saying so what we need is we need africanization of it which subtext communism what we need is communism being led by her as long as she leads it great but here's the problem last time i checked communism was invented by a guy named Karl Marx, who was a European, who also had some very, very, very negative stuff to say about black people. So to say that it's African, that it's culturally African, I'm going to use a, 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 a page out of their book. Isn't that cultural misappropriation? Like, aren't you culturally appropriating that the white people's communism? Like, fuck off, bitch. Like, okay, so That's what right. else does she say? Please, we don't talk about our esteemed politicians like that, Byron, please. But uh, I think that there's, there's Margaret, Margaret Thatcher did say the white man ruined Africa by introducing Karl Marx to the continent. And I think she was absolutely right because often traditional African culture, right, whether it be localism, whether it be chieftainship, whether it be monarchy, it didn't have a political structure. It had an emergent organic structure, mostly where you have a chief and you have people under the chief and things like that with, with the vision of labor and all the rest of it. It wasn't done under an ideology. It was done under the context in which those people find themselves, like most of history for all people all over the world. And I think when communism was introduced to Africa, a lot of people just put... Well, African culture, where we all communally own and do stuff, equals communism. But it's not all the same thing. Communism was born in a place where you had the Industrial Revolution. It was a response to the Industrial Revolution. It wasn't a response to chieftainships in Africa. But somehow no. people still get confused between the two. Yeah. So let, let's, be, let's be very clear. Before we had any form of Marxism or capitalism or any of that kind of modern stuff, we had basically fiefdoms. We had kings and queens. We had monarchs. We had people going around in kings and queens, right? That monarchical system meant that there was always a degree of hierarchy, as Roman always says. It's not democracy, it's hierarchy. We had hierarchy. The hierarchy was peasant the should we say the police if you will if you will the enforcers we had the barons above the barons we had the noblemen we had the kings and we had the queens it came down in a pyramid type structure so who owned everything oh well, it was obvious it was a king right for king and country like if the king didn't want you to have your lands he took it back like there's countless british stories of that and what happened when noblemen started to lose their land, right? They got pissed off. And they would eventually went and they overthrew it. And they said, look, we can't keep having this situation where every time we get a crazy king that's lost his marbles, because most of the time the kings were inbred. So when they lose their marbles, we can't just lose our land because the king's a nut job. So we all need to kind of be equal here. like, And we need to have this thing called property rights, which is why it was like, my work, my risk, my reward. You can't take it. And that the government's role would be to protect that. So who was the government originally protecting that from? 
Well, the king and queen, obviously, because they were the tyrants of the time. So Marx comes along and goes, no, 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 no. You can't even have that. Like, no, the government must have everything. And then by it having everything, you've all got nothing. And then that makes you equal, right? So it's kind of like a worse form, a much worse form of like tyrannical kingship. Because at the end of the day, you go, okay, now that you're all equal, in a normal regulated society with normal people, somebody wants to stand up and be like, yeah, I'm a little bit more equal than the rest of you. And everybody else looks at him going, are you? And he's like, yes, I am. So you need to have somebody who's got this big ass boot that stamps down on that guy and goes, no, you're not. So who's the person who's making everybody stay equal? Where nobody puts their head above the parrot? Well, it's usually the people who run the dictatorship. I mean, the communist utopia. So in this instant, it would be this clan. This clan would be the the person with her high heels stamping on everybody, telling them, ah, see, you're all equal. You're all equally under my foot. So yeah. you, can't, you can't say that that's tribalness. You can't say that that's monarchy as such. Because monarchy worked different. Monarchy worked on a structural basis. If you got pissed off in a, mon in a monarchy environment, you could rise up against the queen. You could rise up against the king. The geniusness of communism is you can't do that. You can't rise up against the overlords because that would be you, in theory, putting your head above the parrots and being like, I'm better than everybody else. You can't do that. And then when you get your head stamped in by the high heel, all they do is they go, yeah, but you, you were trying to usurp the agenda. You were. It's not that you're rising up against a tyrannical government. Counter-revolutionary. There you go. So that's, that's all... That's all they've got to argue. So it's not the same as African tribalism. That's not, that's not the same. And to equate it is dishonest. And actually, I take great offense to it because Karl Marx was an Englishman. And that's cultural appropriation. Why are you appropriating Western culture? I thought this is all about Africanization of the law. Freaking cultural appropriation, this... I mean, I mean, to be honest, I'll have a lot more respect for it if there was a, a, a very good nuanced argument about what Africanization actually means. Because today, Africanization basically equals communism. And we know that is not what Africanization means. Like, we are big decolonialists, you and I. Like, we want South Africa to break up, for the Zulus to have their own Zulu law, for the causes to have their own causal law, and, you know, use precedent to just build upon the existing laws of those different cultural groups. That would be true Africanization of the law. But for Ladiwe Sisulu, she wants to take over the whole country and then impose Africanization, i.e. communism, across the entire nation that encompasses different African tribes. So you can't have one Africanized legal system because the different tribes don't even agree on that Africanized legal system. So, so it's, what does she, very, very what does she say Africanized law is? Of her to suggest otherwise. What does she say African law is? Because you haven't you haven't told me this. So what is African law? What what does that equal? Uh, she never says so, just by the way. She never actually <laughs> says so. She just points out a whole lot of issues. And then she says we have to do better. Okay, but what she's saying, she wants so, the Africanization of the legal system. What does the Africanization of the legal system look like? What what is how is it different from a Western legal system? What is different? And uh, not much. You have to read into her argument a little bit, and it appears like the difference is that there's no debt, and the difference is that black people own everything. That appears to be the main differences between western systems and african systems okay so who, so who, so who are the black us. people that own everything if we give it to the 50 million black people and then the indians and the white people have nothing is that is that equal ownership or or how is that because that sounds to me kind of like racist you can't just go that's the whole point of apartheid wasn't it you gave all the stuff to the whites and the blacks had no property rights didn't didn't they fight against that and didn't they, every time they got the accusation of reper reverse apartheid, didn't they say, no, that's not what we're doing. We're not doing reverse apartheid. It sounds very much to me like that is what they're doing. It, get, confirm this for me. Cla clarify this for me. What, 
What is black legal systems? I don't understand. What what is it? Well, she doesn't say so. So I'm afraid I don't I don't really know. I do know though. Though, for example, when I was in law school, we had the Bear case, B H E, which was a, a case from 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 Zululand, where in Zulu culture, the the most senior son inherits the entire estate of the father, right? But in the Bear case, the Constitutional Court said that is unconstitutional. Constitutional. So your tradition African legal system where the eldest son inherits everything is completely unconstitutional. And then DOS Sulu, A is a woman, B I'm sure would love to have inherited some things from her father. So I wonder if she would want to go back to a system where the eldest son inherits every single thing from his African father. I somehow doubt it, which is why I think she is cynically trying to impose communism through the Africanization of the law, which would not benefit her at all because she's actually a black woman, if you know what I mean. Yeah, the frustration that I have with this and the reason that this annoys me so much is because it's like, let's all stand around and constantly keep using terms like decolonization, Africanization, uh, anti-apartheid, black economic empowerment. Let's keep throwing buzzwords around as if they kind of mean something. And then let's say we don't like the existing infrastructure because it's not that. So what is that? What what is it that you're after? Let's look at it from a legal point of view. Right now, you and I are lawyers. What's the big thing about the legal system? The legal system needs to be certain. It needs to be certain and it needs to be non-retrospect, which basically means I can't go there today. I do something. And then when I go before the courts, the courts say to me, Oh, well, we've changed our mind. And actually, whilst you did what you did at the time and it was perfectly legal, we're now saying it's illegal because that would be unjust. So we have this notion of a certain legal structure. It needs to be certain. It needs to be non-retrospect. In other words, it needs to apply at the time you did something. It needs to be clear. It needs to be just what we call equitable. Right. And the basis of justness is that it fits into moral integrity and it fits into ideas or notions of justice, which is the idea of don't take a laugh. Because let's face it, outside of the realms of justice, there's no scientific way to prove to anybody why I shouldn't kill people. It's a concept of morality, of justice. But everybody needs to have a shared concept of what equitable concepts are. Now, we have that shared concept. It's called the Constitution. That's why we're a constitutional democracy, because those ideas of justice are enshrined in the Constitution. If you Africanize this, then what you land up with is you land up with Zimbabwe, where basically you can go before the courts and they basically say to you, yeah, when you did it at the time, it wasn't illegal, but it is now. And yeah, just give us your shit because we want to take it. If you go before them, they go, well, we've decided that actually, you know, we don't like you. So it's our now notion of justice that you can't have anything. Like, give it back. Like, there's got to be a degree of uniformity. Why is there got to be that uniformity? Because not everybody in the land is the same. They're not all Zulus. They're not all causes. They're not all white. They're not all Afrikaans. They're not all Christian. Some of them are Muslim. Some of them are Hindu. Some of them are atheist. You have to have a shared concept, a shared concept of morals and values. That is the Constitution, which I know she hates because she's written stuff about that before. So to say you want the Africanization of the legal system, it's proper bullshit, man. Like, what are you actually trying to say? What you're actually trying to say is, well, I don't own everything and I've got pretty pink shoes. And wouldn't it be swell if I owned everything and then I controlled everything underneath a one-party dictatorship and I said that all the black people get everything? Oh, whilst I control it, I mean, obviously, I'll, I'll let you use it. And as part of my controlling stuff, I'll tell all the whiteies to piss off back to Europe. Like, this chick is mentally deranged. And I love the fact that she's part of the ANC because it shows the ANC for exactly what it is. A bunch of fucking scumbag communist bastards who want to steal your shit. And as long as nobody understands that, we are in some deep doo-doo. Like, seriously, call them out for who they are. Communist bastards, scumbags that belong in hell. And that's my comment. I do like the fact that you said... I like the fact you said we're in deep shit, and then he says, but there is some doo-doo. 
can, you can use the word twice. It's fine. <laughs> but yes, I think the the point of this video is to show the intellectual prowess of the ANC, and this is basically the pinnacle of that. And as you can see, it's the pinnacle of a very, very, very small scale. So there we go. I, I hope she wins. I hope she does become the ANC president, and I hope that we. <laughs> It gives us more content for morning shot. So there we go. This chick, this chick, this chick is de de deranged, mate. Like she's proper deranged. Like I don't know, man. I, I don't. I don't know how anybody in that party looks at her and goes, "Oh, that's a leader." She is the chairperson of the transformation committee of the ANC. That's her job is to transform shit. Transform what? You don't know what you're talking about. You just talk shit. Oh man, the ANC are so fucked. Like, and as long as they stay in the in power, man, South Africa's fucked. I don't know. Anyway, everybody, I'm starting off. Well, oh, hopefully she becomes the ANC president. Yeah, I'm fed up with this yeah. story. So come on, Byron, cool. let's take a break. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>